Today we've got a class of geometry problem that's been a little bit generalized from the way that you normally see this. So let's suppose that we've got a square that has side length one. We'll call that a unit square. Now let's take another unit square and pin these two vertices together as we see in this picture and rotate one of the unit squares by theta degrees or theta radians depending on how you want to measure that angle. I guess when we do the calculation we'll be doing theta radians. And then this creates kind of an obvious maybe intersecting portion and our goal is to find the area of that intersected portion which I have shaded in blue and then outlined in this magenta color. Okay, so let's just go ahead and dive right into our solution. And the solution that we'll use is kind of a standard solution and is what you would do if you knew what this angle theta was, which is usually the case. Here, that is the generalization. We're taking this arbitrary theta. Okay, so what we're going to do here is introduce a new line segment from this intersection point here to this intersection point up here. So let's see if I can get that in there straight. Okay, so there's my new intersecting point, or so, sorry, my new line segment. Then I'm going to use the fact that these two squares are really the same, they're congruent to each other, to bring a side length measurement of one over here. But then let's observe that we can measure the angle inside of this uh, triangle pretty easily. That's because this line segment with the, that we have added builds two congruent triangles, really by symmetry of the picture. And we know that theta plus twice this angle right here has to be 90 degrees. In other words, it has to be pi over two radians. So that means that our angle right here that I'll call alpha satisfies the following equation. So we have theta plus two times alpha equals pi over two, which of course tells us that alpha is equal to pi over four minus theta over two. So I think that's a pretty straightforward calculation. Okay, nice. But then we can use that to calculate the height of our triangle. So I'll put an H there for the height of our triangle. And of course, once we know the height of the triangle, we can find the area of the triangle, which is going to be 1 half H times 1. And then the area of the entire region, which will simply be twice the area of the triangle. In other words, it's going to be just H. So let's maybe put that over here as a note. And that is the area that is shaded. So I'll just say A subshaded is actually equal to H when all is said and done. But let's observe that we can calculate that pretty easily. Notice that we know that the tangent of alpha will be H over one. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So here we have tangent of alpha is equal to H. Or maybe I'll just put the H over here. So H is equal to the tangent of alpha. Keeping in mind that we're using the fact here that this is a right angle, which I think is pretty obvious because that comes from our rotated square. But notice that we've calculated alpha to be this quantity right here. So we've got that this is the tangent of pi over 4 minus theta over 2. And from here, what we can do is use the angle sum formula for the tangent function. So I'll let you look up the angle sum formula for the tangent function if you need to, but we'll pretty quickly come up with the tangent of pi over four minus the tangent of theta over two all over one plus the tangent of pi over four times the tangent of theta over two. So that's going to be either the angle sum formula for tangent where we've got angle pi over 4 and then negative theta over 2 or an angle difference formula which of course we know that the tangent is an odd function so it's pretty easy to get this off of the angle sum formula. Okay, nice. Now we can use the fact that the tangent of pi over 4 is 1 so we can replace each of those simply with 1. Then after that, we'll use the half angle formula for tangent to put everything in terms of theta. 
Now, it shouldn't be too big of a surprise that our final formula here for this area will be in terms of theta since this theta has been undetermined. Okay, so that's gonna give us the following expression. So we'll have one minus, and then here we'll have one minus the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. So just FYI, that's our half angle formula for tangent. And then this is gonna be all over one plus well, the same thing. So cosine theta over the sine theta, or one minus cosine theta over sine theta. Now it kind of makes sense to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the sine of theta. And let's observe that that's gonna give us the sine of theta minus one plus the cosine theta. So that's what we have in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we have the sine of theta plus one minus the cosine of theta. And I think that's probably close to the simplest expression that we could have for this area. And I guess it's important to point out that this formula doesn't really work all of the time. Let's observe that if theta is equal to zero, in other words, if we have not rotated this at all, then we've got sine of zero, which is zero, minus one plus cosine of zero, which is one. So we have zero in the numerator. We'll also get zero in the denominator. So we have some stuff breaking down there. But let's observe that if we go up here to our original formula and set theta equal to zero, we get tangent of pi over four, which is one, which makes sense because if we haven't rotated it at all, then the overlap is, well, everything. Now we can do another gut check if theta is equal to pi over two, we should not have any intersection. Now let's go over here and check that it makes sense. We'll notice that sine of pi over two is one. So we have one minus one, which is zero, plus cosine of pi over two, which is zero. So we've got zero in the numerator. And then this cosine part will be zero because it's cosine of pi over two. Then we have sine of pi over two, which is one plus one. So we've got zero over two, which is obviously equal to zero. So while this breaks down in one of the edge cases when theta is equal to zero, it works in the other edge case when theta is equal to pi over two. And that's a good place to stop.